today we will see in detail the semi classical treatment of radiation uh, particularly here we are going to see uh, the wave equation for electric field and magnetic field and also axillary field like a and pi that is wave field uh, based on a uh, that is vector potential and based on pi the scalar potential and as well as we are going to see the cross transformation cross uh, invariance and the coulomb charge Uh, semi classical treatment that is the treatment in which the radiation field is uh, treated as a classical field so uh, we are considering the radiation field as a classical field and the interaction between the particle and the radiation field then correspond to certain interaction term uh, in the hamiltonian which are treated by the time dependent perturbation theory and the particle including coulomb interactions between them are treated quantum mechanically uh, that is why this is called semi classical theory radiation theory in short we can say uh, the classical uh, electromagnetic field we are treating uh, that as a classical field and whereas the interaction between the em field and the particle we are treating quantum mechanically that is the reason why this is called semi classical treatment before going into the detail of uh, radiation theory that is a semi classical radiation theory uh, we will uh, see some fundamentals of wave equation in terms of uh, electric field and in terms of magnetic field as well as in terms of axillary parameter which is the main important topic uh, uh, in this lecture we will see what is the axillary parameter shortly uh, now you consider uh, that rho is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 that is the wave is free to move there is uh, no source here so uh, if you take uh, Maxwell's third equation which says that uh, curl E is equal to minus uh, delta P by delta T. If you take curl fourth side that is uh, both left hand side and right hand side you will get curl, uh, curl, up, uh, curl up curl up E is equal to minus of course we have taken anti side outside. Uh, curl of uh, partial derivative of P with respect to T. So, uh, this is the equation we got it. And now, what we are going to do is we are making use of the vector identity. Curl of curl of a vector is equal to uh, gradient of divergence of G minus uh, del square E. This is from vector identity. In the right hand side, what I am doing is I am interchanging the operator. Uh, see, the del operation is a, a gradient differential with respect to facial coordinate, that is x, y, z. And uh, this uh, the partial differentiation is with respect to time. So, if you change the order of operator, nothing will happen because it is a differentiation with respect to uh, Spatial coordinate, this is with respect to time, that also partial derivative. So nothing will change. So you will get uh, minus uh, delta curl P uh, over uh, delta T. Delta uh, over delta T of curl P. So now we will uh, replace this uh, right hand side by using this relation. We know very well that from Maxwell's fourth equation, curl P minus mu naught epsilon naught uh, partial T E by T T is equal to mu naught J. Now, what is our assumption? There is no source. That is, no, uh, rho is 0, J also is equal to 0. So, this uh, right hand side become 0. And also, we know uh, minus, uh, sorry, is mu naught into epsilon naught is nothing but 1 over C square. That also we know. So, uh, uh, ultimately, the curl P 
P will become 1 over C squared uh, delta E by delta T. Then you substitute this result here. So delta A P instead of delta uh, curl uh, P, you substitute 1 over C squared delta E over delta T. That's what I have done it. Since C squared is a constant, uh, you can uh, take out. Before that, I like to highlight one important point. See, it is uh, from actual first law, you know, divergence E is equal to rho by epsilon naught. But our, uh, our uh, we have kept rho is equal to zero. As per our conditions, rho is equal to zero, that is no source. J also is, is equal to zero. Naturally, this uh, divergence E, divergence E become zero in the uh, left hand side and the, the minus del squared e uh, because we are replacing uh, curl e by one, 1 over c squared delta e by delta t uh, so you can take 1 over c squared outside because it's a constant uh, this will become a second order time derivative uh, derivative time derivative of e so delta e squared if you rearrange delta e, e squared Sorry, delta squared e minus 1 over c squared. Uh, I mean, uh, del squared e minus uh, 1 over c squared, delta squared e over delta t squared, which is equal to 0. This will be, uh, this will be uh, similar to our conventional uh, wave equation. So, conven conventional wave equation, you will get uh, del squared f minus 1 over c squared. Uh, delta squared uh, f over delta uh, t squared so uh, so this is the conventional waves uh, wave function this is uh, del squared uh, we will see what will happen to uh, magnetic field now we will see the wave equation in terms of magnetic field <coughs> as usual we have assumed the rho is equal to zero and uh, j also is equal to zero uh, just take maxwell fourth equation uh, that is uh, curl p is equal to mu naught epsilon naught delta e by delta e uh, t plus uh, mu naught j but however we have uh, taken j as zero so the second term will become zero now as usual uh, as you have done in the case of a electric field you do the same thing first, magnetic field. You take a uh, curl uh, both uh, left hand side and the right hand side. So curl of curl uh, P is equal to mu naught epsilon naught curl uh, delta E by delta T. As usual from vector identity, uh, curl of curl of uh, vector is equal to gradient of uh, divergence of P minus uh, del squared P. So uh, and also, you know, uh, just in the right hand side, we have interchanged to the operator. I have already explained uh, nothing will change. No physics will change just because of interchanging the operator. However, it is not possible in uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, the tell operation is uh, related to uh, the Cartesian coordinate or some uh, coordinate system that is which is spatial coordinate system and the next one is time derivative uh, that is a that to partial time derivative so by changing the order of the operator nothing will change and also in the left hand side you know from actual second equation divergence of p equal to zero so that's what i have written and the second term is minus del squared p now uh, this uh, curl e uh, you know the curl e is equal to minus uh, delta p by delta t uh, from maxwell third equation that also you know uh, so here already there is a derivative uh, before that curl you have another derivative so this will become second order time derivative that's what I have written here. That is uh, del squared P is equal to 1 over C squared 
delta squared b over delta t squared or it, you can rearrange this in this form which is equal to uh, 0 delta squared b minus 1 over c squared uh, delta squared b uh, over delta t squared is equal to uh, 0 this is exactly the same wave equation what we got in the case of electric field now we will see about the auxiliary parameter uh, from Maxwell's second uh, second equation, uh, divergence of P is equal to zero. We know from vector identity, divergence of a curl of a any vector is equal to zero. Uh, that is here also we can realize uh, divergence P is equal to zero, which is valid for any value of P. That is an important point. Uh, similarly, uh, here, uh, this is valid for any value of uh, vector A, vector potential. This is vector potential A. So, it is valid for any vector potential. So, comparing these two equations, uh, we will uh, know that P is equal to curl A, where A is the vector potential. And also, it is true for any arbitrary vector. So, this A is uh, called axillary parameter. Similarly, I am going to introduce another uh, axillary parameter, pi. Uh, you take the Maxwell third equation, uh, that is curl E plus delta P over delta T is equal to 0. Uh, and uh, from this e expression, you know P is... Uh, nothing but curl A. So, I am replacing the P by curl A. Now, I am taking curl outside because in first term you have curl, second term you have, you have curl. But here in classical mechanics, you can interchange the operator. This is time derivative, this is spatial derivative. So, nothing will happen. So, I am interchanging the time derivative operator. So, you will get curl uh, e plus uh, delta A over delta T is equal to 0. We know from vector identity, curl of a gradient of a scalar is equal to 0. Uh, uh, to this 0, I am applying this one. That is curl of a uh, gradient of a scalar. So, here I am introducing curl of a gradient of a scalar. So, I am taking curl both side out and it will become minus uh, pi, uh, minus uh, delta pi. This negative sign, uh, sign is, uh, negative sign of a gradient is a convention one. We know that uh, for force, we used to write minus gradient of the V, where V is the potential, uh, potential. so, uh, uh, and minus del V is the, uh, delta V is a force. So, it is a convention to introduce negative sign in the case of gradient of a uh, scalar. So, uh, this will become E is equal to uh, minus delta A over delta T minus uh, uh, del pi. So, uh, this is the another uh, axillary parameter. Uh, just now, we have seen that uh, magnetic field can be written as uh, using axillary parameter A, that is curl A, P is equal to curl A. Similarly, here E is equal to minus delta A over delta T minus uh, gradient pi. So, this uh, A and pi are called axillary parameter. Just now, we have seen electric field and uh, magnetic field in terms of the axillary parameter A and pi. Now, let us see what will happen if we change A into A prime, that is uh, some other vector. Let uh, we choose A prime is equal to uh, A plus uh, gradient chi. Chi is the, uh, uh, chi is the gauge parameter. Uh, then P is equal to curl A prime. Instead of A, we are replacing A prime. But uh, however, we know A prime is equal to uh, A uh, 
gradient chi. So uh, if you take uh, this uh, curl A, you will get, uh, sorry, curl A prime, you will get curl A plus uh, curl of uh, gradient of chi, that is, uh, which is a scalar quantity. So curl of a gradient of a scalar, you know, it is equal to zero. So finally, you end up with just curl A. So by changing the uh, A uh, value, A, A vector A, uh, nothing will change with P. So that is a very important point to remember. So even if you take some other A, instead of A, you take A prime, nothing will change. You are... Uh, Magnetic field is fixed irrespective of this axillary parameter A, where A is called uh, vector, uh, vector potential. Uh, similarly, in the case of E, see, you can see E is equal to minus uh, uh, delta A prime uh, divided by delta T minus uh, uh, gradient of pi, uh, pi prime. So, uh, if you change, uh, sorry, here we are changing only A prime. Uh, we know that changing A prime will not change the magnetic field. Uh, so it don't have any effect. Just now we have seen. So this is equal to minus uh, delta A over delta T minus uh, gradient of uh, pi. In this case, we have seen that uh, change uh, change of uh, vector potential will not change the uh, magnetic field. Similarly, uh, here we will see the change of axillary parameter will not change the electric field. Uh, now, let us say pi prime. Uh, we are changing uh, pi uh, to pi prime. That is pi prime is equal to uh, pi minus uh, delta chi over delta t. Now, you know, E uh, from axillary parameter, E is equal to minus uh, delta A prime uh, delta T uh, minus uh, gradient pi prime. Now, uh, this uh, A prime, uh, we are taken as A plus uh, gradient of uh, chi uh, divided by delta T. Similarly, this pi, pi will become pi minus uh, delta chi over delta T. Now you just expand, this first one if you expand, minus uh, delta A over delta T, and the second one, uh, delta A over delta T, uh, gradient chi. Similarly, this one, minus uh, gradient phi, uh, plus uh, this one, because here one minus, here one minus. Minus minus will become plus, plus uh, gradient delta chi over delta T. Uh, here, as I said, we can interchange the operation. Uh, that is uh, time derivative first, next uh, gradient. Here, uh, uh, same you do the same thing. Time derivative first and the gradient second. Uh, then in that case, it is second term and the fourth term will get cancelled. Uh, that is uh, this one. And this one will cancel. Because we are interchanging the operator. So naturally, this will get changed. Uh, hence, uh, you will arrive at minus delta A over delta T minus uh, gradient pi. That's what our basic definition of electric field. So by changing the axillary parameter, the E will, uh, electric field will not change. Similarly, in the previous, previous case, we have seen changing the uh, vector potential A uh, your uh, magnetic field will not change. In this case, uh, by changing the vector potential as well as scalar, scalar potential, uh, your uh, electric field will not get changed. Uh, that is uh, that is called Koch transformation. That is, we are transferring A to A prime, which is equal to A plus delta chi. Similarly, uh, pi to pi prime. Uh, which is equal to pi uh, minus uh, delta chi over delta t. This change in potential without, without changing the field is called Koch transformation. You may ask uh, what are the advantages? Why we have to do this uh, axillary with the axillary parameter rather than uh, E and P? Uh, that is very interesting question. Uh, my aim is not to 
uh, address the, that problem because that will come in the electromagnetic theory. Uh, however, I like to introduce uh, just because of I want to uh, go further with uh, a radiation of uh, uh, that is uh, interaction, uh, interaction of radiation with matter. That is uh, my aim. Uh, but using auxiliary parameter will have uh, some advantage uh, in comparison with the original field P and E under a particular condition. That we will see in the case of electromagnetic theory. Here it is not my aim. Now we will see the wave equation in terms of auxiliary parameter. First, you take uh, Maxwell fourth equation. That is per P minus 1 over C squared uh, DE over DT is equal to uh, mu naught J. This is the Maxwell uh, fourth equation. Uh, now, uh, you know P is equal to curl A. So, this will become curl of curl A. And also E, you know uh, that I think uh, e, you know, this E can be written as minus uh, delta A pi delta T minus a gradient pi. So, uh, we are replacing E pi this uh, parameter and we are considering the source term also. So, is equal to mu naught J. Uh, from vector identity, we have seen so many times. The curl of curl of a vector can be written as gradient of uh, divergence of A minus uh, del squared A. And this one, the second term will become minus of minus plus 1 over C squared, uh, second order time derivative of A plus uh, 1 over C squared, this one, that is gradient 5. As I said, I can interchange the operator in the case of classical mechanics. So, this is equal to mu naught j. Now, just you rearrange the term. Uh, that is, you have a gradient in the fourth term here and the first term gradient. So, you take gradient outside. So, the first term will become divergence a. Divergence of a. And the fourth one will become, because we are taking uh, gradient outside, will is equal to 1 over c squared uh, delta uh, pi over delta t. Uh, this is uh, the term inside the bracket is called Lorentz condition. According to Lorentz condition, this will be 0. So the terms left out is minus del squared a, yes, third one, uh, plus 1 over c squared delta squared a over uh, delta t squared, which is equal to mu j. That is this one and this one and of course the right hand side. Now you multiply by minus 1. You will get uh, delta squared A minus 1 over C squared. Uh, uh, delta squared A uh, divided by delta T squared which is equal to minus mu naught J. Uh, this is the wave equation based on the axillary parameter A. It is exactly similar to uh, the wave equation we have seen for electric field and magnetic field except the source parameter. Here we have considered the source parameter. If there is no source, this will become naturally zero. It is exactly same as th uh, that of the previous two cases. Now we will try the wave equation uh, using another uh, auxiliary parameter pi. Uh, from Maxwell first equation, you know, uh, divergence of E is equal to rho by epsilon naught. We have already seen E is equal to minus delta A over delta T minus gradient pi. Hence, this divergence of uh, E, E we are replacing by this one. E replacing this one. So, this will be become divergence of minus uh, delta A over delta T minus gradient of pi, which is equal to rho by epsilon naught. Uh, just I am bringing this uh, divergence A, uh, changing the interchanging the operator. Divergence of gradient will become uh, del squared, that is Laplacian operator, 
pi del squared pi which is equal to rho by epsilon naught. So imposing the Lorentz condition according to Lorentz condition uh, divergence a is equal to 1 over c squared uh, delta pi over delta t. Uh, so if uh, uh, here you can notice uh, one thing uh, that is I am uh, replacing the divergence a pi minus 1 over c squared uh, delta uh, pi over delta t. So uh, this I am going to introduce here. Uh, that is the divergence a instead of divergence a. I am going to introduce minus uh, this one. That is, I think I can note down this. I am bringing this to here. Instead of divergence A, I am replacing this. Divergence A. Oh, sorry. Uh, divergence A. Uh, one minute. So, uh, this uh, divergence A. I am replacing by minus 1 over c squared uh, delta uh, pi pi delta t. So uh, already there is one time derivative. This will become uh, second order time derivative. Of course with negative sign. Minus 1 over c squared uh, delta squared psi over uh, delta t squared. And here you have 1 pi squared. So uh, if you uh, multiply this pi minus 1 you will get the sign will get changed because here uh, there is one minus already one minus here one minus this will become plus that is uh, this will be plus this is minus first term is minus this is plus and this is plus so if you uh, multiply by minus one you will get uh, del squared pi minus one over c squared uh, delta squared pi over delta t squared which is equal to minus rho by epsilon naught uh, this is the, exactly the wave equation what we got for uh, uh, what we got for the previous three cases that is uh, based on electric field, magnetic field and vector potential. Uh, this is wave equation exactly similar to wave equation uh, using the uh, scalar potential. Of course, if rho is equal to zero, this will become exactly the free form wave equation. in detail about the Coulomb curves. We know the Lorentz condition is uh, divergence of A plus 1 over C squared uh, delta pi pi delta t equal to 0. Uh, if pi equal to 0 or uh, let us say pi is a constant throughout the range. So uh, if you differentiate the constant you will get 0. Even otherwise if uh, pi is uh, 0 it is uh, 0. That means uh, Divergence A is equal to 0 in this case. It is 0 always in this case. Uh, so divergence of A is equal to 0 is called Coulomb curves. And one more interesting thing is we can uh, view this Coulomb curves in different way. Uh, we know uh, from, the, uh, from the axillary parameter uh, delta over delta t divergence uh, A minus del squared pi is equal to rho by epsilon. Uh, just now, uh, just to two minutes back only, I, we have seen this. Uh, remember that if you take this uh, delta squared pi, which is equal to minus epsilon, uh, minus rho by epsilon, this is nothing but Poisson equation, which is valid under all, uh, most of the boundary condition. This is valid. So in order to make this as a Poisson uh, equation, this uh, divergence a uh, must be equal to zero. That is the another explanation for uh, divergence a is equal to zero, which is called uh, Coulomb curves. In continuation of this, in my next lecture, I am going to deliver a, a topic uh, on the interaction of matter with the radiation. Uh, I am planning to give two or three lectures about the uh, interaction of matter with radiation. Uh, thank you very much for watching my videos and uh, supporting me. 
if you have any question kindly send to me the following email id vasu at g vasu mku at gmail.com i will try to answer at earliest my youtube ja- channel id is www dot youtube dot com slash c slash vasu v physics uh, thank you very much